folks welcome to another we need a saga test ride if you've not seen one of these videos before what I do I take the bike out for about half an hour I give you my first impressions on it tell you as much as I can about the bike so that if you're looking at one of these bikes hopefully it helps you make a better decision so so today I'm going to talk about this the Kawasaki versus X 300 I don't know what you call this. I guess it is a lightweight adventure bike. I guess is the best way to describe it. It's got spoked wheels. It's got a windscreen. It's got a bit of luggage carrying capacity. It's um, a bit higher off the ground. So yeah, I think what Kawasaki's trying to do here is adventure riding on a budget. The idea is that you should be able to take it a little bit off road and you should be able to do it without spending a bomb like you have to on some of those big adventure bikes. Let's get on, have a bit of a chat about the Kawasaki Versus X 300. Let's go. All right, let's get into it. Versus X 300. So I do these test rides on a reasonably regular basis. And the reason I'm able to test such a variety of bikes is because I've got a really good relationship with the guys at Sydney City Motorcycles here in Sydney. So thanks again fellas for letting me take the bikes out. And if you do enjoy the video and find it useful, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. That lets them know you're watching and hopefully they'll let me take out a few more bikes in the weeks and months ahead. So Kawasaki versus X 300. I think the X is like cross terrain or something, you know, you can take it off road as well. Anyway, I, I do a bit of trail riding myself. I've got a Yamaha trail bike. So yeah, kind of keen to see how this compares and get a feel for who might want to use a bike like this. Well, it handles okay, that's for sure. So what do we got here? It's a... um. I would call this an entry-level adventure bike because, like I was saying before, I think one of the best things this has going for it is, in Australia, it's about a third the price of, you know, a big BMW adventure bike. So you can actually get into the adventure riding genre for a half-decent price. You know, you don't need to go and spend a bomb on one of those big bikes. And so at the price point it's at, I'm not expecting massive features and luxury and power. I'm just expecting something that's capable and um, is easy to live with. This is the highway, so I'll give it a bit of a rev here and see how it accelerates. Yeah, good, I mean, that's highway cruising speed, so whilst you're not gonna get there in a massive hurry, it's certainly got the legs to carry you once you do get there. So this is the same 300cc parallel twin that they use in the Ninja 300 just retune slightly as they often do for the less sporty bikes to give it more mid-range. I took a sound clip before I left on my good quality microphone so I'll splice that in there now to give you a feel for what the Versus X 300 sounds like because the GoPro doesn't pick it up very well. Here we go. So back to what I was saying before the highway as well, another point worth noting is because it's a 300cc, this is actually a learner legal bike here. So you could potentially jump on this as your first ever bike, which I think is kind of exciting because this is something pretty different to the usual starter bike. Okay, a few comments on ergonomics while I'm thinking about it. 
it's an adventure bike so you feel nice and high off the ground you feel like you got a sort of commanding road presence and a good view ahead this screen it's non-adjustable but it gives a decent amount of wind protection I'm still getting a little bit above my head but that's because I'm super tall but yeah it's doing a good job of keeping the wind off my chest noticeably better than a naked bike seating position well the bars are nice and high close to your waist so that you don't exert any energy holding them there good for long trips plenty of leg room even for me as a taller rider the only downside I'm noticing to the ergonomics is the seat is very hard so I think if you're doing long distance riding which a lot of adventurers like to do you're probably going to have to look into a bit of support or something for the seat because you know I've been on here 15 minutes and I can already feel how hard the seat is other than that comfy well laid out easy to get along with the engine's interesting because it's a bit buzzy and uh, not super powerful but you do get that same 12,000 rpm red line that you get in a Ninja 300 so at least you get to rev it out and have a bit of fun that way the clutch is light easy to use I believe it's got the same slipper clutch as the Ninja 300 which is probably part of why it's so smooth on the downshifts all right little detour here this part I call the car park test I bring every bike I test here and the whole idea of this is just to test its low speed maneuverability so I'll typically just find a little spot to turn around like here grab the rear brake fast idle and just try and turn it around oh that's really good oh yep that could be one of the tightest u-turns I've ever done here so um, great great amount of steering lock which is going to be really handy if you take this thing off-road as well because there's nothing worse than when you get into a little tight situation you don't have enough steering lock to maneuver where you want so the Versus is going to be able to help you out there with a good amount of steering lock and just the balance feels really good as well you know it's important for new riders to be able to feel confident and balanced with their bike when they're doing things like that and yeah the Versus has got a good good amount of balance to make slow speed maneuvering easy peasy what about ride comfort I mean this is an adventure bike you're going to want to take it on some pretty variable terrain um, it actually feels reasonably firmly sprung I was actually expecting it to feel a little softer but it sort of almost feels more like a, um, a road bike in terms of the ride quality it's um yeah it's pretty firm I don't think it's got massive suspension travel I think it's got about five inches so a little bit more than your um you know your sports bike style but not quite in the range of you know some of the adventure type bikes another thing to note the forks aren't adjustable either I believe you've got a preload adjustment in the shock but that's it as far as adjustability goes so what you see is what you get with the the Versus X something else I want to test out is the brakes so I'm going to accelerate up a little bit here no one behind me for a while big squeeze on the levers hmm uh, the bike does have ABS which is a good thing but what I just noticed then was you need a real good squeeze of the lever to get the most out of the brakes a um, little bit doughy on the initial squeeze um, definitely improves as you squeeze harder but I wouldn't say the brakes are amazing yeah, I guess I'd, I guess I'd call it an adequate amount of brakes for the, um, the size and power of the... Uh, did you guys see that? This l plater just changed into my lane without indicating. Oh, they're indicating this time. Good man. All right. Another quick little highway up to speed acceleration. So this is wide open throttle. So you can see, you can still pick up a decent amount of speed but you kind of have to use all the bike's performance to do so. Like I said, adequate. I think adequate is a good way to describe this. And let's not forget folks, we are not talking about a $20,000 adventure bike here. We're talking about one that costs one third that much. Just think about that for a second. Think about how much you can spend on fuel, 
tires, actually going out on adventures when you've only spent six or seven grand on the bike. I think it's a fantastic idea to be honest. Lots of people out there aren't going to need extreme off-road performance and this thing with 19 inch spoked front, groove tires, a little bit of suspension travel, a little bit of ground clearance, this is going to take you most places. You know, you're going to have to be pretty keen to want to go anywhere else. And um, I just think it's a great idea. You're also not distracted by rider modes, suspension settings, any of that carry on. You're just free to ride. And um, I've found with a couple of the bikes I've tested recently that that simplicity really appeals to me. So I think if you are in the market for a bike like this, you might also want to try Honda's recently released CRF250 Rally because on paper that, um, that seems to me to be a similar match to this bike. It's only a 250 single cylinder so this thing's probably got a little bit more performance but the CRF Rally, you know, further off the ground, it's got a windscreen on it, bigger fuel tank. All things that help make it a bit more adventure-y and all things that kind of make it similar to the Versus. So yeah, CRF250 Rally I think is probably worth a look. Um, I own a WR250R, but I feel like that's a bit of a different kettle of fish to this. The WR's definitely lighter than this. Um, I would say probably more off-road capable, better suspension, but it's also a lot more expensive and doesn't carry any luggage out of the factory so you know I think the Versus is going to appeal to a different crowd and there are going to be people out there that would prefer this to the WR for example. Yeah so when I'm doing these reviews I'm always trying to think of a tagline that belongs on the video title and I guess for this I think it's probably going to be lightweight affordable adventuring because like I was saying I reckon with a capable rider this bike will go most of the places you would go on a bigger, better adventure bike. But it's going to do so for a fraction of the price. So you can, you can keep that money for fuel, tyres, camping gear, all the other good stuff that comes along with adventure riding. Coming through this little shopping district is always handy to just get a feel for what its manners are like at low speed as well. And, I'm pleased to say the Versus is nice and easy to get along with. It, you still feel this nice light clutch action and an easy throttle. It's a good, smooth, easy bike to get along with in this kind of situation. So there you have it folks. First impressions of a Kawasaki Versus X 300. I'm pretty impressed with this bike few little things that need fixing. I think the brakes could do with a bit of improving. I think the seat could be a little bit softer, but, but I mean, those are pretty small gripes. And for the price, I hardly think it's um, a deal breaker. So if you've stuck around this far in the video, thanks very much for watching. You are a true believer. And um, I'll just throw it out there. I'm trying to throw different ideas in each time I make these reviews make them a bit more interesting, give it a bit more variety. So if you've got any suggestions on what you'd like to see in these videos, let me know in the comments below and I'll try and incorporate it into a future video. Anyway, time to hand this back. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys for another test ride real soon. Cheers. Um.